Welcome to worship this Sunday, September 3rd. I am Pastor Laura, the pastor for the Southern Albemarle Church, Mount Zion United Methodist, and Scottsville United Methodist. I am so glad that we can worship together today. And as we enter into this time of worship, I invite us to be aware of how God is present with us here in this digital space. Let us pray. Lord of the burning bush, you still reveal yourself to us. Thank you for our revelations of your love and mercy. Thank you for how you hear our cries and respond. Call us and guide us so that others can experience these revelations and see the glorious sight of your love. Amen. Let us join together and sing our opening hymn, Holy Ground. Let's sing. Our first scripture reading comes from the book of Psalms. It's Psalm 105, verses 1 through 6, 23 through 26, and 45b, the second half of verse 45. Listen for the word of God. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wonderful works, glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles and the judgments he has uttered. O offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. Then Israel came to Egypt. Jacob lived as an alien in the land of Ham. And the Lord made his people very fruitful and made them stronger than their foes, whose hearts he then turned to hate his people to deal craftily with his servants. He sent his servant Moses and Aaron, whom he had chosen. Praise the Lord. This is the word of God for all people. Thanks be to God. Today is the last day in our summer sermon series exploring the book of Genesis and the beginning of the book of Exodus. So this is the final time you will get to hear my quick recap of events. We are following the stories of the family of Abraham. God chose Abraham and promised that his family would become a great nation that would be a blessing for others. The sign of this promise or covenant relationship is the practice of circumcision in the land of Canaan. Abraham's second born son, Isaac, inherited this promise, as did Isaac's second-born son, Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons, and God changed Jacob's name to Israel. One of Jacob's sons, Joseph, was sold into slavery, but eventually ended up as second in charge in Egypt and saved the country from a famine. 
because of that famine, Jacob and his family moved to Egypt under the protection of Joseph. But after Jacob and his sons died, the Egyptians forgot the good that Joseph did for them. And Pharaoh grew fearful, because Jacob's descendants, the Hebrews, were numerous. So Pharaoh enslaved the Hebrew people and oppressed them and even tried to commit genocide against them. During this time, a boy named Moses was born. Through the bravery of the Hebrew midwives, Moses' mother and sister, and Pharaoh's daughter and her attendants, Moses, Moses survives the genocidal time and grows up as the adopted son of Pharaoh's daughter. But when Moses is older, he kills an Egyptian who is beating a Hebrew man, and he hides the body. When Moses realizes that someone saw him commit murder and reported it, and that Pharaoh now wants to capture him, Moses flees. He ends up in Midian, where he meets a group of sisters at a well. He protects the sisters from some shepherds, and he ends up marrying one of them. This is where we pick up the story for today. This is a reading from Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 15. Listen for the word of God. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, Here I am. Then God said, Come no closer, remove the sandals from your feet, for the ground on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. God said further, thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, thus you shall say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you this is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. This is the word of God for all people. Thanks be to God. This is an amazing story. It's probably one of the most important stories in the Bible, and there are some wonderful details about God that I want us to note. So first we see that God hears the cries. God hears our cries. God says that God has heard the cries of the Hebrew people. God is not indifferent to their suffering and oppression. God has heard them and will respond. Second, we see how God is faithful to the promise that God made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God will deliver them from slavery and oppression and will bring them to the land of Canaan, which was one of those signs of the promise. 
Third, we learn God's name. I am who I am. This is such a powerful statement. Some commentators say that a better translation is I will be who I will be. Either way, we hear power in this name. God is. God always is. God endures and ever will be. God is action in the present tense. In the New Testament, in John's Gospel, we hear Jesus echo this name when he declares his I am statements, such as he is, when he says, I am the bread of life, I am the vine, I am the light of the world. And finally, we learn or we're reminded that God partners with us humans. God calls us to do the work of God, to work with God here on earth, such as helping those who are oppressed, in the passage, we also learn something about Moses. We know that Moses is a Hebrew, raised by Egyptians, and that he is a murderer. But this passage shows us that Moses is curious. He's willing to respond when God calls him. We learn that Moses, though, has some misgivings about responding positively to God's call. I mean, if we would have kept reading, we would see that Moses has a series of objections to the work that God has called him to. But God answers each one. God reassures Moses and God remains faithful to the promise that God will be with him. Yet, for our focus for today, I want us to think about something different in this passage. I want us to think about the burning bush. How many of us have wished at some point for a burning bush experience? I mean, I know that I have. I have wanted some clear sign, some unmistakable sign from God what my next faithful step will be. I have wanted that bush that looks like it is on fire yet not consumed to be planted right in front of me. An unmistakable sign of God's presence and direction. But after I started thinking about it, I realized that I have had at least one burning bush experience. I've mentioned before that when I felt the call to ordained ministry, I was at a church leadership training event and I was in a workshop on worship planning. Looking back, that workshop was a burning bush, a marker from God directing me where to go. I felt God's presence in that place and it was that feeling that nudged me to accept my call to ordained ministry. So when I think about my burning bush experience, I realize that God still gets our attention. God still uses things or events in our lives to remind us of God's presence. Can any of you relate? But what does this have to do with us? So last fall, a group of us from both churches went to a meeting in Richmond with a church coach, a person who helps churches to better reach out and connect with their communities. Now, I can't remember who said it, but I remember that at this meeting, we were challenged to consider the fact that we, the church, both the church as a collective, as a whole, but also us as individuals, should be a burning bush for others. We are to be what gets people to stop and sense God's presence. We are to be what gets people to notice that God is working, that God has guidance for them, that God is with them. We are to be planted in front of others, helping them to step aside and see the great sight that is our Lord. When we think about what we learn about God in this passage from Exodus, that God hears the cries of the oppressed, that God cares and responds, that God is faithful, that God endures and always is. These are the things that God wants all of us to know, those inside the church and those outside the church. But as we also learned, God partners with us humans to do this work, to spread this message. So God needs us to be burning bushes, to get the attention of others, to help them see God. We can be like Moses and think that this is intimidating work and give a lot of excuses. But God will be with us and God will help us overcome the excuses. So how can we be a burning bush? Well, this is what we're trying to figure out. Our team learned that part of what we need to do 
is simply be present in the community, to be present at community events, to show up and be a kind, loving presence, to let people know that we are that we exist, that we are here. I mean, honestly, I talk with people in the community, and a lot of people don't know where either church is located. Our church buildings have just kind of faded into the backdrop of the town, of the community, and don't draw people to turn aside anymore. This is not a slight on our buildings because they are great, but it does mean that we need to be intentional about showing up as a church and as individuals, helping others to see God in us. What else can we do? Well, this is where we need your help and input. Church is not a spectator sport. God wants to partner with us. Our ability to partner may differ depending on our circumstances, but we can all find a way to partner with God in this work of being a burning bush. I want to hear your thoughts and ideas. Maybe we can't do everything, but what can we do with our gifts and graces to be a burning bush in Scottsville and Esmont and our surrounding area, to be a burning bush in this digital space. So what are your ideas of how we can be a burning bush? Our eternal, enduring God, who is and always will be, hears the cries of all God's people. And God responds, but God partners with us in that response. God has called each of us to be a burning bush in our communities, helping others to see the great sight of our Lord and to know of God's enduring, steadfast love and mercy. Amen. As we think about the discipleship opportunities we have coming up, um, I think maybe the most important thing to mention is that if you are in the Scottsville Esmont area next Sunday, September 10th, we will not have in person worship at Mount Zion. We are only having in person worship at Scottsville because we're going to be led by the singing group Faithful Praise. Um, it is a joy to be able to welcome them back to worship with us, and we will have a potluck lunch after worship. So if you're in the area, I really hope you can join us. But also, don't worry, if you're not in the area, we will still have an online worship service that you can worship with. Um, for any other information, news, happenings that are going on in the lives of our congregations, make sure you are getting our email newsletter that comes out weekly. Um, you can go to the Google form in the description of this video to sign up for that. That is also a good place to let us know if you have any joys or concerns. If there's anything we can be in prayer with you for. And now let us turn our hearts, turn our minds to God for a time of prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, thank you for being, for your enduring presence and love in our lives. Thank you for those burning bush moments where you come to us, where you reveal yourself to us and you guide us. Keep us ever mindful, eyes and hearts open so that we can see you, so that we can step aside and be in your presence, be aware of your glory. We pray today for all of the concerns that we have. We remember those who are sick and injured and we pray for their healing. For those who are anxious, we pray for peace. We pray for a cessation of violence for those who are in the midst of harm's way, for weapons of war to be beaten into weapons of plowshares. And Lord, we can read the news and know there is a lot of instability in our world. And so where there is instability, where there is uncertainty, enter into those areas. Help people to know your presence, your steadfastness. Help them to cling to you as the rock of their salvation. And where there is death and destruction, 
comfort people. Help us as your church, as your people, to be your hands and feet, to be sign bearers, to be burning bushes that help people to see you and come to know you. Guide us to make disciples of you. And in our time of silence, hear our unspoken prayers and help us to hear you. We pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. Forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, too, for your generosity and giving so that we can do the ministries of God, do the work that God is calling us to so that we can go out and be that burning bush. If you would like to donate to the ministries of our congregations, you can mail that to P.O. Box 280, Scottsville, Virginia, 24590. That address is in the description of the video. And then we make sure it gets to the right place. But let us give thanks to God for your generous gifts. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for your generous gifts, for the ways you bless us so that we can be a blessing to others, so that we can do your work, that we, so that we can be a burning bush and help others to come to see the glorious sight that is you and your love. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Let's join together and sing our doxology. Our closing hymn is Christ for the World We Seek. Let's sing together.
Receive the benediction. Lord, send us forth this week to be burning bushes, to help others to step aside, to witness your amazingness, to gain a, an awareness of your presence, to learn about your great and enduring love and mercy. Send us forth in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.